Okay, so welcome back to part two. And we were just talking about uh, the feelings that both of them have. INTJs have this issue where they kind of appear like stiff robots. Uh, they're really not touchy-feely people. Like out of all the types, you'd say ISTJs, INTJs are really not touchy-feely, really do not like hugs. Sometimes you might feel even awkward just talking to them about sex. Like maybe you're with your friends, like male and male friends or female and female friends. You might just feel awkward talking to them about sex. Like these physical things to do with the body, uh, they don't really express their feelings as much, right? Because extroverted feelers in general are more expressive. So even if it's lower, right, for the INTP, their feeling function is lower, but because it's extroverted, it comes out more, right? So INTPs, the, it's extroverted, their feeling is extroverted, but it's their inferior function. So they can be very goofy people. So they, they might have a goofy smile or they might, I think they do wear their heart on their sleeves. Like it's kind of very easy to tell how an INTP is feeling emotionally because they, they, they sometimes are not very subtle, right? They're not, they're not really very subtle with how they feel. I think like if an INTP just likes a girl, they'll, they'll just say so. They're like, yeah, I like you. You know, they, they wouldn't, <laughs> they wouldn't hide it or anything like that. Or yeah. And the reason I say that is because their dominant function is TI. So sometimes they can be blunt, right? And it's coupled by the fact that they express their feelings. So it's TI bluntness coupled with FE in the sense that they just say things like if an INTP doesn't like food, emotionally they'll be more you know like if you gave an intp food to try and they didn't like it they'll visually on their face they, they would show more disgust than the intj i think intjs can be still as blunt they just wouldn't express it as much they, they would verbally express it but maybe the look of disgust on on their face would be a bit more masked basically i'm trying to say intjs would be better at winning a poker game than INTPs if we're basing it on facial expressions. So face, facial expression-wise, body-wise, they're more expressive. They just express their emotions very awkwardly. It's kind of like comparing Sheldon from Big Bang Theory to Wallowitz, though those are two that they're not INTP and INTJ, but... Um, Sheldon kind of expresses his feelings awkwardly, like when he tries to hug someone to comfort them. But Wallowitz is kind of creepy when he expresses his feelings. So, yeah, people would probably say INTPs can be a bit weird and creepy, but INTJs would be more stereotyped as cold, aloof, and distant. Um, moving on to some of the differences between their intuition introverted intuition is sort of like a spotlight like a bright spotlight or a single laser beam pointed in one direction so uh intjs have this sort of tunnel vision where their goal is to just focus on one thing and any new piece of information they get is really just to build up that one thing so if an INTJ wants to be a lawyer, anything they read, they're mainly focusing on it purely for the sake of trying to improve their knowledge about law. So if an INTJ wants to be a lawyer, if they hear about economics, the only question is, okay, how does this economics affect the law, right? So if, if let's say, they want to be a lawyer and they hear um, a country has... Uh, higher like they've increased their gdp they don't really care about the gdp but they're more wondering like uh, would that lead to new regulations right with the law or for example 
uh, the trade tariffs, the time there was a fight with Trump and Xi Jinping, with the trade tariffs, the if the INTJ lawyer is more concerned with, okay, how does this law affect companies, whereas the INTP has a more general NE concern. Yeah, I think this is much easier if it was like an INTJ versus ENTP video just because of the order of functions. But anyway, um, <laughs> the INTP is more concerned in general with how the trade tariff affects everything, you know, business, manufacturing, lifestyle, culture, travel, right? So that's what INTJs do. And even though Warren Buffett is seen as sort of an ISTJ, he has sort of that both SI and NI have that tunnel vision where they focus on one thing and one thing only. So Warren Buffett, for example, he specifically and repeatedly says anything outside of his field of competence, he doesn't bother with. So computers is like, that's outside my field of competence. Technology companies, outside my field of competence so they just stick to what they know it's like they know one thing but they know it very 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 well right intps on the other hand they read more broadly right out of all the types they're the second type to most to be most widely read after entps so intjs will have a more narrow focus again building towards one specific goal so if if again an intj could decide to be a physicist or a mathematician and the only thing they're really concerned about is how does this affect maths or how does this affect physics intps they love reading broadly so there is no link back to one idea it's just a web of ideas right so anything they just care about things for their own sake ideas for their own sake so they're more well-rounded with the ideas right because extroversion is also like a breadth as opposed to depth so to figure out if you're an intp or an intj one question you can ask yourself is how broadly do you read and is there something you've wanted to do since your childhood career wise like Definitely by the age of 15, most INTJs have decided on one career they want to choose. INTPs are likely to change what they want to do, like maybe every three years, like maybe start of high school, they wanted to be something, end of high school, they wanted to be something else, middle of university, they wanted to do something else, master's degree, they again want to do something else. So INTPs can be a bit more wishy-washy uh they change their opinions a bit more that's another thing in terms of open-mindedness as well i think intps are more willing to admit when they're wrong intjs sort of have this arrogant confidence about everything they say and they will never admit they're wrong unless they're really like like to prove an intj wrong you really really have to prove like they have to be wrong by a big margin but if an intp is slightly wrong they'll admit it and they'll change their opinion they see no shame in that they're like okay yeah i was wrong i admit it you were right good luck convincing an intj to admit they're wrong they rarely admit they're wrong so try and think of some of maybe the arrogant doctors that you know or specialists and, you know, eventually they're proven wrong. And then finally, after all the proof, they're like, yeah, yeah, I admit he was wrong. So it's very hard to get them to admit that they're wrong. But the flip side of that is they're more self-confident in their ideas. So they're able to pursue their ideas uh, more easily. And I had this interesting analogy about Riddler and Penguin from Gotham that I'll get into in part three of this video. So stay tuned.